common questions that I get asked is um, whether or not IVF is painful, particularly the egg retrieval and the embryo transfer process. Um, now that I've been through, well, right now I've been through three of them, I think um, it's worthy for me to create a video and tell you about how the process was like for me in really basic layman's terms. I'm not, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. Um, this is just my understanding of the process and also the pain level that I felt um, and what happens before and after. Basically, when you naturally ovulate, your body should release one mature egg in hopes that it will be fertilized by a sperm and then turn into an embryo. If you're going through a process like IVF, you're taking follicle stimulating hormones in order for your body to develop as many follicles and as many eggs as possible so that the doctor has quite a few eggs that are matured in order to retrieve. And once a successful embryo has been developed, then one of those embryos will be transferred back into your uterus hoping that it implants and grows into a baby so that means that you have to go through two procedures in the IVF process apart from all the preparation work like the needles and the medication there's two procedures which is the egg retrieval and then about three to five days after the egg retrieval is the embryo transfer so leading up to the egg retrieval there's a lot of blood tests and a lot of ultrasounds just to monitor your body and see how it's going and determine the right day for the egg retrieval then the nurse will call you to let you know when the egg retrieval day is and then you have to take a trigger shot 48 hours before that egg retrieval and that is very time sensitive it needs to be taken at the exact time because your egg retrieval will happen exactly 48 hours after that and we're told to arrive half an hour before our egg retrieval procedure because it is very time sensitive it's not something you want to be late for when you arrive there early it allows the nursing team and the scientists to have a chat with you so that you can be prepared for the process and what to expect and they also do all your ID checks and everything like that for the egg retrieval I could actually choose whether or not I wanted to be asleep under general anesthesia or if I wanted to go under twilight anesthesia. So twilight anesthesia was what I chose. You're basically given like a very mild sedative and you're still awake during the process, you're conscious. Um, but you kind of feel like you're a little bit drunk <laughs> or a little bit hypnotized. How's your tea, Grandma Annie? <laughs> Wouldn't be long, I can't see. I have actually asked my doctor the pros and cons of going under versus being awake during the process and he has said to me that he prefers for me to be awake just because there might be instances where he needs me to respond to something or he asks me a question um, or to move a certain way and it's just easier and better if I'm awake during that process. Okay, so let me rewind back. I arrived half an hour before my um, egg retrieval and then after they do all the briefings and the checks, it's time to go into the operating theater. So I walk there with my doctor. It's actually really nice to have that relationship with him and be able to talk to him. I then sit down on the chair and then the doctor prepares my arm for the anesthesia. And that part pain wise is like a one out of 10. It's just like a little prick. And then instantly I felt like I've had a lot to drink and I'm a little bit like wobbly. And so the nursing team lied me back down on the chair, put my legs up on the stirrups. And the doctor then uses an ultrasound in order to see where my ovaries are. So there's an ultrasound screen that's next to me and I can actually see what's going on. I don't know exactly what's going on, but the doctor talks me through the process. Once he locates the ovaries, he then passes like a special needle attached to a catheter through my vaginal wall in order to get to the ovarian fluid. And that part where he passes through the vaginal wall does hurt a little bit. I'd say it's about like a three out of 10, but it feels like someone is like pinching you for like two or three seconds and then it's done. So it's not awful, it's, it's pretty bearable, probably because I was a little bit drunk, but you know, it's quite bearable in terms of pain. On the ultrasound screen, you can actually see the gentle suction that takes the ovarian fluid out of the catheter into a test tube. So on the screen, you can see the ovarian fluid slowly going away. And then right next to the doctor is where the catheter is attached and you actually see the fluid go into the test tube. And the fluid is like, I'm really sorry, this is TMI. The fluid is like a pink reddish color. And it's just really surreal to see it all happen. Like you're awake during the process and you can actually see your ovarian fluid being drained out into the test tube. 
The test tube is then given to the embryologist who is right behind my doctor and she has everything under a microscope and looks through the fluid for the eggs. I don't know how they set up the camera but whatever she could see under the microscope I could actually see on a TV screen in front of me as well because there was like a live feed. So as soon as she finds an egg the um, scientist screams I found an egg and then you actually look up on the screen and you get to see your egg for the first time and it's a magical moment but also you you're holding your breath just hoping that she finds more eggs because obviously the more eggs you have the more chances that you'll have some of them fertilized and then you increase your chance of having viable embryos for the embryo transfer or to be frozen and then once you're all done he applies a little bit of pressure and that pressure is meant to stop the bleeding he said I'm just doing this so that um, you won't experience so much bleeding and that pressure is uncomfortable it kind of feels like when you get a pap smear and there's like something happening down there and there's pressure but you know it is still bearable i'd say that's like a three out of ten of pain as well and then the whole process is over and then once you're done and the doctor has like tidied up the area and everything then the nurses wheel you back to your recovery bay and once I go back to my recovery bay, that's when I'm reunited with my husband, Will. During the process where I've actually been in the egg retrieval, he's actually been taken to another room for sperm collection as well. So I think I'll insert a clip of the sperm collection room here just in case you're interested. But if you're going through IVF with your husband like I am, then he plays a part on the day as well. So he needs to be there for the egg retrieval. So once I'm back in the recovery bay, um, I've still got the um, little catheter inside of me with the anesthesia. I'm still feeling a little bit drowsy and then the nurse comes out to check my blood pressure and then everything's okay then she gives me some painkillers and um, also breakfast as well and I have to fill my stomach with food and drink before taking the painkillers they also gave me a heat pack to put over my belly and also a pad to line my underwear as well because you do get bleeding afterwards your vagina is trying to heal so there is a little bit of bleeding I didn't really have a lot of bleeding Bleeding, but the stomach cramps were quite intense. I actually think the stomach cramps were the worst part of the process for me. While I'm in the recovery room, the um, cramps don't feel that bad and I guess it's because you, you're still kind of like sedated. <laughs> but once you get home and the painkillers kind of wear off, that's when it hurts really bad. And um, the heat pack I get to take home and like just microwave and keep putting it on my stomach so that it feels better. The cramps are probably like anywhere between like a 5 out of 10 to like a 7 out of 10 it kind of just goes up and down throughout the day and the next day I basically feel recovered like I feel totally fine um, in order for your body to heal the nurses will tell you not to immerse your body in water so no baths, no spas, jacuzzis or swimming or anything like that um, and also just to take it easy, no strenuous exercise because your ovaries are still enlarged at this point and um, you just don't want to push yourself, you want to give your body time to recover. And that is basically the egg retrieval. That is a 30 minute procedure and pain wise, it's really not that bad at all. The most pain that you'll feel is like maybe a three out of 10 or a four out of 10. It's the cramping afterwards that is the more painful part. So I do think that if you're trying to consider between going under or being awake, of course, speak to your doctor first and then get their recommendation. But from my personal experience, um, it was totally fine for me to be awake during the process. So now that the egg retrieval is done, you have an idea of how many eggs have been retrieved, but you're holding your breath for the next few days because you're just praying that they all fertilize and not all make eggs make it through this process. Next day, I get a call from both the nurse and the scientist. So the nurse does like a general checkup of how you're feeling, how you're thinking, and also tells you the next steps in terms of your medication. And the scientist gives you the updates on the embryos. So um, the next day, the scientist will tell us how many eggs um, have been fertilized successfully. And that call is really nerve wracking as well. So you just kind of hope for the best news that all the eggs fertilized, but that's not always the case. And after you receive news on how many eggs have been fertilized into embryos you then kind of nervously wait to see if they're developing normally because not all embryos will continue to develop as they should and they basically um, are either viable for an embryo transfer or 
to be frozen or they're not. Now that I'm on my third IVF cycle, I can say that every cycle has been a little bit different. So the first cycle that we went through, I had four eggs retrieved, all four of them fertilized, which we were really happy about. And then we continued to monitor them over the next five days and then transferred the most viable embryo into my uterus. But sadly, the other embryos didn't make it. They didn't continue developing as they should have. And then in my second cycle, I only had one embryo out of the three that they collected. Only one of them fertilized and turned into an embryo. And literally on the next day, the nurses just said, we want you back in to do the embryo transfer ASAP because the embryo's best chance of survival is being in its natural environment, in the uterus. So um, it was a really early and unexpected embryo transfer. So the day of your embryo transfer after your egg retrieval really varies. It just all depends on how your embryos are developing and what your doctor recommends. But the embryo transfer itself is a very quick and easy process. So again, I arrived half an hour before my procedure and um, they do all the checks. When the doctor's ready, I walk with him to the operating theater. I get to meet the embryo again before they transfer it into my body. So the scientist has it under a microscope and she really encourages you to get close and have a look at the embryo. So I've been taking my camera with me just so I can get that footage just in case like that's the golden embryo. I want to have memories of it from the very start. And it's a nice moment to be able to see that embryo before it gets transferred into your body. And I lie down on the chair with my legs up on the stirrups. Um, don't need any anesthesia or painkillers or anything for this process because it's relatively painless. The doctor then loads the embryo into a catheter and that gets transferred through your vagina into your uterus. When the embryo is transferred into your uterus because you've got an ultrasound on you as well, on the ultrasound screen you can actually see the embryo enter the uterus and it's like a really bright spot on the dark ultrasound because I don't really know what's going on with the ultrasound but I can see the bright spot and that's when you know it's there and after 15 minutes it's all done. Oh I forgot to say that before the embryo transfer you have to have a full bladder so they told me to drink two cups of water before my embryo transfer and you really really need a wee but you have to hold it in because um, having your bladder full helps the doctor see where he's putting the embryo and you have this strange thought in your head like is it okay to go to the bathroom after having an embryo put inside me um, but <laughs> But the embryo is not put in the bladder, so it has no effect at all. The team's like, it's okay, it's safe to go to the toilet, just go. Um, so you have to empty your bladder right afterwards. And right after the embryo transfer, I had to go back to the acupuncturist for a post-embryo transfer acupuncture. But that is just something that I do out of my own preference, but obviously not everybody chooses to do acupuncture to facilitate their IVF process. So yeah, that's the whole egg retrieval and embryo transfer explained. And the nurse will then advise you when to go back for your pregnancy blood test and unfortunately for us we haven't ever made it to that point during the waiting period I end up getting my period and after that happens I have to call the nurses the next day and they organize for me to come in for a blood test to confirm that it is my period I actually think that during the waiting period the whole waiting game is way worse than any pain that you feel through the egg retrieval and embryo transfer because you're literally just having all of your faith in that one embryo inside of you and even though they tell you to take it easy, it's it's easier said than done, like much easier said than done. And if you're watching this because you're about to start your IVF cycle or about to go through your first egg retrieval, it is very nerve wracking, but you'll push through and everything will be worth it in the end once you have your babies. So sending you all my love and baby dust. Mwah.